my little yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I have got another shawl for you. This is the Granny Merge Shawl. Mm -hmm. And this is basically an incorporation of the basic Granny Shawl, which we know and love, with some variations to give it some added visual interest. We have some solid bits, we've got some granny bits, and you can customize this however you see fit. Very, very simple, works up fast, and it's oh so lovely. Now for this particular piece, I used Lion Brand's Mandawa not sponsored for this video, but I always like to let you guys know what it is that I use if you want to duplicate the results. I used about a skein and a half of this mandala. And so for those of you that are not familiar, mandala is 100% acrylic, which I love. It is a weight of three. It's very soft, I will say that, machine washable and dryable, and it is 590 yards. So you got a good amount of yardage there. And for this particular piece, I used doo -doo -doo -doo, a size H five millimeter hook. You can of course use whatever yarn you want, whatever hook size works best for you, you know, play around. But um, yeah. Absolutely love how this came out with the colorway and everything. And uh, I mean, I had seen examples of this previously as a square blanket, but I thought this could be done as a shawl, totally. So here we are. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, first things first with row one. By the way, for this example, I'm gonna be using Lion Brand's ice cream, and this is the colorway of blueberry, I believe. It's about the same weight, so I figure, you know, I can use the same hook and you can see approximately the same effect. So leaving a little bit of a tail, I'm going to do a slip knot. And chances are that while I'm filming, my AC is going to kick on, so please forgive me. So after we do our slip knot, we're going to need to chain up one, two, three, four, five. Now the reason why is because we're going to work into that initial chain as sort of our uh, magic ring kind of doohickey, and then an additional four chains because we need a double crochet and a chain one space. So chain five initially, or do a magic ring and then a chaining of four. Either way is fine. This is just the method that I prefer. So going to do in our first chain three double crochets and then a chaining of three three more double crochets chain one, and one more double crochet. And that's all going into that first chain. And yeah, it does stretch, but you can always cinch it up nice and tightly and sew in your end later. So yes, this does start off exactly like a typical granny shawl, but there will be variations later. So, you know, there, there's a test, so take notes. <laughs> all right, so onwards to row two. Okay, row two, start by chaining up four. One, two, whoa. two, three, four. Turn the work and then into your chain space there, three double crochets. There we go chain one, and then into our chain three space, the center spine of our shawl, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Three doubles, chain three, 
and three doubles. Chain one, and then into the chain one space at the end, three doubles, chain one, one double. So three doubles. chain one, one double. And that is the end of row two. Alrighty. Okay, row three. Now this is the last row that I'm going to do of the, the grainy stitches. Although, quite frankly, you can do as many or as few as you want to in regard to not just the, the grainy parts of the shell, but also the solid parts. So if you want thicker or more narrow uh, stripes, more power to you. You know, you can customize this however you want as far as the look that you're trying to achieve. So from here, going to again chain up four. One, two, three, four. Turn the work. And into that chain one space, three doubles. go pull out a little bit more yarn okay then from here chain one into the chain one space three doubles chain one into the center spine three doubles chain three three doubles now, something also that you can keep in mind, there are, of course, variations to this, where, for instance, if you don't want to do a chain one in between your clusters, if you want the clusters to be closer together, well, then you can just omit that chain one. That's up to you. I've also seen where in this sort of uh, spine chain space, people do two chains instead of three. This is just me personally, the way I like to do it. If you're finding that your work is puckering or not laying flat as you wish it to, you might want to adjust the number of chains accordingly or your hook size for that matter. So I've got my three doubles, my chain three, my three doubles, then chain one, three doubles in the next chain one space, There is nothing saying that what I'm doing is law. You know, you can play around and really experiment to make this your own. So I did my three doubles, my chain one, then into the last chain one space, three doubles, chain one, one double. Three doubles, chain one, and one double. And there you go. That is the end of row three. Now, like I said, you can do as many of these rows as you want to, or as few as you want to. But we are going to now go into the solid part of the Granny Merge shawl. So let's get to it. Okay, so for row four, doing the solid aspect of the Granny Merge shawl, we're still going to chain up four, just as we have been. One, two, three, four, turn the work. Now, instead of doing three doubles in this chain one space, only do two, just two doubles. There we go. And then for the rest of this side of the shawl, it's a matter of doing double crochets in the double crochets and a double crochet, just one in the chain space. It's very simple. So just double in the double. For every double crochet, just do a double crochet. Very straightforward. And then a double crochet into the chain space, just one. And then double in the double. Double in the double. 
see if I can actually get the stitch. There we go. Double in the double. And then double in the chain space. Double in the double. And so forth. One more. Okay, so then when you reach the center spine, that chain three space, into that space, two doubles, chain three, and two doubles. And then continue on down this side in the same fashion. Now also, I do find that it helps if you actually count it out so that you make sure that you're not making too many stitches or too few stitches. So I just did the chain one space. So what I, I tend to do actually is in the first double crochet, say, you know, one, and then two, three, and then the chain space is four. And then you just go back to square one with one, two, three. But at the end, we need to do our increase at the end. So at the end, in that chain one space, it's two doubles, just like we did in the beginning chain one, and another double. And that is the end of row four. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, row five is in essence the same as row four. Chain up four. One, two, three, four. Turn the work into the chain one space two doubles, and then for every double crochet, we need a double crochet. It's very cut and dry here. And like the granny shawl itself, since this really is a very close cousin to the original granny shawl, since it's so close, it's one of those projects where you can totally go on autopilot, which I love doing a fabulous project and you don't have to agonize or think about the pattern too much. Those are the best kinds, I think. Okay, so I just got one more. And then, like we did before, into the chain three space, two doubles, chain three, and two doubles. And then you work your way down the other side just as we did initially, just a double for each double. Just being sure to do the increase at the end. That's all. And I'm gonna do one more row of the solids, but quite frankly, it is the exact same thing as this row that we're doing right now. Just be sure that when you are doing your increases on the solid rows, that you're doing two doubles. But when you're doing your increases with the granny segments of the shawl, that you do three doubles. That is really the only major difference that you, you need to be aware of that. You don't want to mess up your stitch count. 
Okay, so I'm almost to the end. Okay, so I reached the chain one space, so two doubles. Chain one. And one double. And that is the end of row five. So like I said, I'm going to do one more row of the solid, which of course would be chaining up four and then into the chain one space right here, two doubles, then just do doubles all the way across until you reach the chain three space where you do two doubles, chain three, two doubles in that space, then doubles all the way across and in the chain one space, two doubles, chain one, one double. Okay, and I will meet back up with you for starting over with the granny segment once again. Okay, I'll be, I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, so we're up to row seven. Now, if you've been following along, your piece should look something like this. Okay, so now keep in mind, if you want to do more rows of solid or more rows of the granny, Dealer's choice. It's totally up to you. You can do whatever it is that you want with this. Now, I am going to go back to the granny section. So to do that, I'm going to start by chaining up four. One, two, three, four. Turn the work. And because this is a granny section in this chain one space, three doubles. In the solid, it's just two. So we've got three doubles, chain one, then skipping three doubles down here, one, two, and three. In that fourth one, going in with three doubles for another granny cluster. Chain one, skip three doubles, one, two, three, going to the fourth with three doubles. Chain one, skip three doubles into the fourth. Chain one, skip three doubles, going into the fourth. There we go. Chain one, skip three doubles, going into the fourth with three doubles. Chain one, and then if you did your, your counting correctly, you should have three doubles left. And then we have our chain three space, which into that space, it's three doubles, chain three, three doubles. There we go. And then chain one, skip the next three doubles into the fourth with three doubles. Chain one, skip three doubles into the fourth with three doubles and so on and so forth. Now, of course, also, I mean, if you want to, Nothing saying that you can't just alternate between a solid row and a granny row, just back, forth, back, forth. You could do that too. Or another thing that you could do is do on one half, you know, because you have your center spine. So on one half, do solid. On the other half, do granny. And so, for instance, go up, say, you know, however many rows with solid on one side, 
granny on the other side and then swap off to granny on one side, saw on the other side and, and so on and so forth. Um, almost like a, uh, like a parquet kind of effect. So one, two, three, and then to that fourth, you can really change it up and make it your own, which I really, really like. But this is the, the basic way of creating the effect. One, two, three. Play around with it. Have fun. I always say, march to the beat of your own bongos. Mm -hmm. You are in charge of your project, not the other way around. One, two, three, and then double into there. Three doubles, yes. Chain one. And then last but not least, skipping these last three doubles into the chain one space. Three doubles, chain one, one double. And there you go, that's the end of row seven. Ta-da! And for good measure, I'm just gonna do one more row of the granny just because I love spending time with you guys. And of course, I like to make sure that you guys are totally cool and you got it and you know everything's all copacetic. So let's do one more row for good measure. And give me one sec, I'll be right back. Okay. Row eight, which is the last row that I'm going to do on camera. But if you want to keep on keeping on with your, uh, you know, patterning of three rows granny, three rows solid, you know, you would do a total of nine and then, you know, swap off again. So I chained up four right there. And then into the chain one space, three doubles. There we are. And then chain one and three doubles into the next chain one space and repeat that until you hit the center spine. Now I was thinking that something that you could quite conceivably do as far as playing around with color, when I made my initial piece with the mandala, I just let the yarn do its own thing as far as the color was concerned. Now, I think what would be actually rather interesting is if you do the solid, the solid rows in one color and the granny rows in another color, which I think would really make things pop a little bit. I think that would look rather cool. The only thing, though, of course, to keep in mind is that you would have two ends to sew in for every time that you change color. That to me is the only drawback, but sometimes it's worth it, especially if the visual effect is very striking and appealing. Well, an artist has to, you know, we have to suffer for our work sometimes. <laughs> And me, I am not a fan of sewing in ends. That's why when I work with colorway yarn like mandala, I usually just let it do its own thing. Okay, so we've reached the center spine. So in that center chain three space, it's three doubles, chain three, and three doubles. But I would say that by all means, play around with color and technique and variation. It's how we grow creatively as stitchers. Now, the only thing that I would strongly suggest, and yes, going down this side, chain one, three doubles in the chain one space until we reach the end. The only thing that I would suggest is that if you are going to use this as a kind of stash buster, just be sure that the yarn that you use is all the same material and the same thickness, the same weight. 
Otherwise, your peace, it will buckle and it will not lie flat uh, as much as if, you know, if you used all the same yarn, it will have a much more homogenous texture, which I think is important. Personal opinion. But as far as color, I would say go crazy. Have some fun. Okay, and we're almost to the end of row eight. But like I said, I like chit-chatting with you guys, giving you ideas of how you can really make this your own piece. So in the last chain one space, three doubles. chain one and one double and there you go and so you would repeat row eight so that you get row nine and then you would go back to the the solid stitching where you would do your two doubles in the chain space here and then you would do a double in each double crochet a double in each chain space, and then of course be sure in the center spine, two doubles, chain three, two doubles. Double crochet your way all the way across to the other side, and two doubles in the chain space here. Chain one, one double. And there you go. Just keep going back and forth between solid and granny, granny and solid, until your piece is big enough. And there you go. That's all there is to it. So my dears, I hope you like this tutorial. I really love this variation on the tried and true granny shawl. The granny merge shawl is definitely one that I'm going to be making again. In fact, I already started playing around with the same pattern but using a different yarn. And I'm really quite happy with the results. Now this is a hand dyed merino, superwash merino yarn that I found at Hobby Lobby. And you don't have the differences of colorway, but it's a tonal yarn. And I am really loving how this is turning out very, very much. The colors are absolutely gorgeous and the texture is lovely, and it has such nice variations all throughout. So you can really do some fabulous things with this stitch. So if you like this tutorial, please do give a little thumbs up button down below. You know I appreciate your appreciation. And until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a good day.